Alright, welcome back guys. Uh, today uh, I want to go over the drawing principles for the art history section of this course. Over the next few weeks, quite a few weeks, uh, I am going to ask you to investigate and look at sculpture. Now the way we're going to be drawing it is um, in multi-angles. Okay? The purpose behind this is if you take something that's three-dimensional like a skull, uh, we need to understand not only one angle, we need to not only understand one angle, but we have to realize that there's the side views, the back views, the front views, the top and the bottom. So we really want to fully understand the whole thing. Now, this comes into handy when we're talking about animation too. Uh, animators will not only create drawings, multi-angle drawings, but they will make what are called maquettes. Maquettes being like sculptures of the characters. Okay? This way they can see how the character looks from all angles and to understand it more. So the first sculpture we are looking at in this series is the Venus of Villendorf. I have provided you with four different angles, a front view, two side views, and a back view. Now, the reason why I want to have them all on a single paper is because I want you to keep scale in mind. Okay, I am purposely having you draw all the different angles and I want them to all be the same size because as you design and plan uh, a, a project, you need to keep the scale in mind. And it actually makes drawing them easier if you keep them all within a line. So just like learning to write, learning to your uppercase and lowercase letters, you can start mapping out your piece of paper to reflect uh, the size of the piece, okay? I've already pre-drew my uh, images just a bit. Here's what I did. I actually took the top, I have a line on top, and I have a line on bottom. The reason for this is because I want to make sure all my figures stay within the same lines, okay? So I really quickly kind of masked out you know, just where I think the figures are going to be. Now, here's my, here's my tactic. I'm going to start with one view. I'm going to get a decent drawing of it. Okay? And then what I'll be able to do is measure off of that one so that all my other ones are in the same scale. I'm going to use a pen uh, so it shows up on camera just a bit easier. Right, so there we go. What do you think, Luke? Does it kind of look like this? Yeah. Yeah? Not too bad, huh? All right. So now, now I want to draw the other ones, but I want to make it the same size. Mm. Talking to my son, Luke. I want to make it the same size as this view. So what I can do is I can use this to my advantage. I know where the tops is. I know where the bottoms are. But now I can kind of get an idea of where the neckline will be, of where the waistline is going to be, and the little legs start. Again, very much like learning to write, because that's what you're doing. You're learning to scale. Right? Uh, and, and again, you know, I do have, I am just copying. I really, I have the answers here. Now, of course, this is where the sculpture part gets interesting because no longer is it a front view, but now there's some motion. There's a different line. There's a different line of motion in this second drawing. So I do need to kind of map that out. It is going to be a little different, 
I'm gonna have the back of the head here. Okay. stop there for now uh, because I think I've illustrated the point I'm trying to make. I'm keeping everything in scale and I'm really gaining an understanding for this artifact as a sculpture. Uh, I've been teaching drawing and painting for quite a few years and we always draw this as an introduction to ancient artifacts and I've typically just have drawn the, the sing singular angle but I really, really strongly feel like I've learned so much more about this as a sculpture than I ever have before, right? So, uh, you know, it, it takes time. Uh, you know, this is not supposed to be a quick little sketch that just, yeah, I'm done, just finish it off real quick. No, it's an investigation into the sculptural qualities of it. Uh, I don't know if you've noticed, but you know, in, in one view, it's really hard to see the little arms, uh, and on the side views, you definitely can. I never had such an appreciation for the forms of the backside as well. Uh, it really, it, it really did what I wanted it to do in my brain, and it, that is to appreciate this as a sculpture. So I'm sure one of the questions I'm going to get is, my paper is not this long, right? Again, we are talking about proportions and scale. So if you have just a regular size eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, uh, think about how it is being presented on a slide. This is a printout from the slide I provided you. Notice that the figures just occupy less space on the piece of paper. They are smaller, so my construction lines, instead of being close to the top and bottom of the page, they're actually quite uh, narrow, right? And so that's the idea, is just to try to organize your space so that all four of these images fit. Now in the future, we might only have three uh, images, and then you can draw them a little bit larger. So there it is, drawing in scale and drawing in multiple angles.